Have you ever broken into a floating ball sack in space on a mission to rip it apart from the inside out just for a hedgehog girl you friend zoned to get kidnapped? Me neither, but boy this game gave me a taste of what that feeling's like. Introducing Crazy Gadget, a sonic level that people dunk on because they don't know how gravity works. You start by dropping down into a chamber where Eggman's voice can be heard. I find it actually hilarious that Eggman's nonchalantly talking to Sonic over the intercom as he holds Amy hostage. It goes to show how confident he is that his plan will succeed and that Sonic's will fail. And why wouldn't he be so gung-ho? In the Dark Side story, we're shown that Eggman learned of the team's faker emerald, meaning all he had to do was prevent them from putting it into the Eclipse Cannon. And what better way from stopping the hero from doing something you don't want to do by a good old kidnapping maneuver? Even without full context, it's made pretty clear that this is a high stakes situation meant to keep you guessing as to what's going to happen next after you complete the level. Spoiler alert, the best cutscene is what happens, but you don't know that yet. So you do your best to ignore the talking breakfast, and like any idiot, you accidentally run into Omo Chow, who doesn't have any tutorials to teach you, surprisingly, just words of encouragement. That's sweet. You've got a hallway with a couple of bots to blow up, which ain't really a big deal unless you get hung up on whether they have souls or not. The real kicker is how stupid this enemy placement is. I could see people arguing that this is a clear trap that the player should see coming, but this game likes to throw ring boxes around just about anywhere, so to expect this situation to be any different is a little silly in my mind. Thankfully, this is where the level's quality starts picking up. You got yourself a rail that isn't on the ground for you to grind on, but the ceiling. Even without Omochao's help, you're smart enough to know that jumping for it's the plan here. It doesn't take any crazy twists or turns, all it does is take you in a straight line. You could have ignored this rail entirely if you wanted to, but that's not the point. It's there to teach you that holding on to rails connected to the ceiling is a safe option that will likely lead you to your destination. In this case, that destination being an artificial chaos, which when disposed of, will let you draw your attention to what puts the crazy in crazy gadget a gravity control switch. Pressing B on one of these bad boys will change the level's gravity according to where the arrow on the console was pointing, in this case, up, which will let you cross the enormous vat of acid that wants to consume you. You'll notice that multiple unbreakable containers were placed around the gravity switch. No doubt is a way to show you how gravity affects not just you, but environmental objects such as containers. Running on the ceiling can feel odd at first, I admit, but it's easy to make the transition. It's not like your controls have been messed with. Now that would be terrible. After fighting a chaos reject, you'll come across another gravity switch. Remember this guy. Hitting it will restore gravity to its original state. And with that, you've beaten a simple room that cleanly explained this level's gimmick without a single line of dialogue needed. How beautiful. Bashing the bots will lead you to the base of a tall vertical room, which I will henceforth refer to as towers, with the only way up being a pulley. You can reach it after homing attacking a chaos lad or the bounce bracelet, your choice. The top of the tower contains what Omochao calls the high speed warp tube, the arc's closest thing to a loop de loop. Reaching the end of that artificial abomination will spit you out into the next room, leaving you eager to press on. That is, if you took the normal route to get here. Remember this gravity switch from before? Let me ask you a question. What if you continue the level without activating it? You may think it impossible due to the door being far beyond what your jump is capable of, but if you execute a super bounce or a well-timed spin dash jump off one of the wall's corners, then you'll have enough height to open and pass through the doors while upside down. A quick jog through the hallway will lead you to that old pulley tower, but pulleys are needed no more now that gravity's on your side. You can simply fall to the ceiling without worry of resistance. The next set of doors would normally be reached by jumping from a pulley, but you can get to it your own way by bouncing to the pulley's platform and jumping from there, or just super bounce again. And with that, you've reached the high speed warp tube. And what happens when you super bounce and break it open? You get sucked in, spun about, and rewarded with a one-up for taking an immensely creative alternate route.
How are there people that hate this level? If you didn't take that GigaChad route, and let's be honest, no one did on their first playthrough, then you were on the main route, where you had to time your homing attacks well so that you didn't fall into the acid. One spring up, and you'll suddenly see a bomb box, which if you react fast enough, you can touch it by holding forward to obliterate all the bots beneath you. What's cool is how even if your reaction time was garbage like mine was the first time I saw this thing, you can still hit it by using your bounce bracelet, which grants grants you the exact amount of reach you need. The gravity switch ahead desires to be activated, but if you ignore it and continue on without doing so, then you'll reach a dead end. Gotta say though, I love this arrow here. It's both pointing at the hole you've got to squeeze through to progress, and telling you that the gravity has to be shifted upwards to get through said hole. Not sure if this double meaning was intentional, but it's great nonetheless. And of course, there's always a trusty Omo Chow on site, ready to help those players that aren't as hot at noticing visual cues in the level. Your bouncy self can't reach high enough to land on the ledge from before, which is why there's a springy pal on each side to help you up, along with a... rail, for some reason. I... <laughs> I have no idea what these rails are doing here. At first I thought their weird positioning against the wall indicated they were meant for some gravity shenanigans, but after experimenting with them right side up and upside down, I'm forced to conclude that they're just a weird design choice meant to kind of help you land on this ledge? I have no clue. Once you're upside down and reach this wall, all you've got to do is hit the spring to clear it, but there's a more important question here. Is this spring launching you high? or low. When you bounce on it, you're getting lower and lower to the ground from the camera's perspective, but higher and higher up from Sonic's perspective. So is it just a matter of perspective at that point, or do we judge whether you're going high or low based on where the floor is? Because if that's the case, then does the ceiling become the floor when the gravity's upside down? I'm confused! Somersaulting through the slit to escape that madness will bring you to a floor and ceiling covered in acid. But don't get too excited. If you bounce here, then you can get a ring box hidden on the floor. Thought we didn't see it. As for the acid, your only option to avoid it and progress is by taking your chances with the rail, or you can style by jumping across. Regardless of your method, you will have entered the gravity room, where things are going to get a little bit weird. You have the option of flipping one of three gravity switches, left, down, or right. The most straightforward one is down, which pulls you towards the abyss you didn't know was below you, and if your aim or reaction time ain't good enough to land on the rail, you'll bite the dust. While I appreciate a challenge like this, I wish the camera would point at the abyss quicker so that you have more time to shoot for the rail. In some cases it does if you move it around in specific ways, but in others it blindsides you with the abyss right as you're about to enter it. I'd completely understand if someone felt cheated by this. Not me though, I'll die on this part regardless if I see the rail or not. If you flip left, then the game immediately asks you if you'd like to flip right, as if it's upset by the decision you made. If you run onwards in defiance, then you'll see why the game was urging you to flip right instead. And that's because there's an abyss. On the wall. Yeah, try figuring that one out. But before that, you'll spot a goodie for being so adventurous. And what's above it but a good old rail. Yet another one gets added to my Why Are You Here collection. Maybe the devs just thought it looked cool. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just looking too far into it. I, I can respect that. If you decide to flip right, whether initially or from the left wall, then you're free to run down to encounter another rail. But wait, this one's cool, I swear. Its curved nature makes it so your gravity transitions from being on the wall to being on the floor. That's hilarious to me, because throughout this entire level your gravity's been dependent on these high-tech sci-fi looking switches, and yet this rail was able to accomplish this mind-numbing feat by curving a little. How could I not be impressed by that? Oh, I know, if the camera had no clue how to move during this section. Notice how it's focused on the wall, now at the abyss, and finally it starts turning to the next section. You got hit, good job. But I don't blame you, because unless you're trying to go slow, the camera will not turn in time for you to see the threat looming in the center of the next room. These camera mishaps are pretty much my only actual complaints against this level. If there was more time put into making sure the player was able to see the threat ahead of them, be it an abyss or a chaos ripoff, then we wouldn't be having any issues. That said, 
how about we purposely cause issues in this level by messing with this gravity room. If you flip to the right, run down for a second, and super bounce against what's now the right wall, then you can sneak your way back into the previous section, albeit from a different perspective. The two vats of acid shouldn't pose any threat to you as long as you carefully navigate the wall. Doing so will lead you back to the previous hallway, where you'll start hovering against the wall instead of walking on it, a clear indicator that the devs did not expect you to move along this surface. If you push on even further, then you'll get stuck in this dead end and softlock yourself, a sad punishment for thinking outside the box. If you follow the same steps but decide to flip left in the gravity room instead, then you'll encounter the same issue from before, where you can't stand on the wall in the hallway, except here you don't have to worry about getting softlocked since there's no dead end. You're free to roam about to your heart's content and return to the play area once you've gotten your fill. Once the level's timer hits the two minute mark, Eggman has some words for you. Jeez, dude, I'm trying my hardest out here. If you keep Sonic still long enough, he'll eventually say, hey, Tails, I'm on my way. That's cute. He can also say, this place is a real pain in the butt. Even Sonic doesn't like this level. What is with these people? Back on the main route, you've got a few electrified beetles ready to ruin your day. You can't go at them whenever you want due to their shocking shield, necessitating you to time your attacks, or better yet, just walk around them. If you didn't take the speed panels, then you'd have enough time to take a look at what's next. A one-up's calling your name as it floats in the middle of the tall room. There's a locked door with no switch inside to open it, and a spring that's attached to the ceiling, aiming down. This is quite the interesting setup that you may just miss if you hit the speed panels and drop down immediately, where- Oh my god, did that thing just give birth? In that fast? I can only imagine the pain it went through. Well, it can't be worse than watching your children get torn apart before your very eyes by a psychotic hedgehog. You know what's the best way to do this, actually? Charging up a light speed dash attack and just letting it rip. Zipping from one target to the next, obliterating each within a split second before finishing off the one that spawned these foul beasts. Now that's a good time. But don't get hasty when those doors open. Remember the ones up above? It's possible that defeating this bot caused them both to open up. Upon examining the room, the only thing that sticks out is the ancient ruins, which have unfortunately been placed in acid leaving you to stick the landing on the runes itself if you want to activate it with your mystic melody. Doing so will spawn platforms that lead you up to, hey, the 1-Up box. We've come full circle. More importantly though, the doors from before opened up, and it doesn't contain your average reward. It instead presents you with a gravity switch. Using it puts you on the ceiling, where this spring's purpose finally makes sense. It's meant to bring you back to the main route, but upside down, letting you progress in the level, but from a completely different perspective, much like the beginning of the level with the Giga Chad route. But what if you didn't take the spring and instead ran backwards through the level? You'd run through the hallway and end up on the ceiling of the tower where an electric shield is waiting for you as yet another reward for exploring this level in creative ways. I just can't get enough of all the paths, intentional or not, that this gravity gimmick opens you up to. Sure, I enjoy it when levels have your usual alternate routes here and there, but there's something that feels so personal about changing gravity and going for a crazy idea that pushes the level design to its limits. And we haven't even covered what I think is the coolest part about going backwards in this section. If you super bounce against this wall and touch the rail from before, then you'll hold onto it, speed up due to the gravity's pull, launch yourself from the momentum, and now that gravity's right side up, you'll fall straight down in the perfect position to land and now grind on the same rail back the way you came. This maneuver is so sick! And just think about how hidden something like this is. You have to look around that huge room, find the ancient ruins, play the song, climb the platforms, change gravity, choose to go backwards instead of taking the main route, go beyond the reward given to you for all that work, and finally, touch the rail for a grand display of multiple game mechanics dancing with one another in such a manner that can only be described as beautiful. 
If you're on the floor of the main route, I can't believe I even have to specify, then might I direct your attention to the rail on the ceiling, which you can hold onto to slide down to the lower sections, where you'll start to get a taste for gun robots with shields. These guys are kind of intimidating when you first meet them, since both your homing attack and bounce bracelet are ineffective at their dismantlement. Luckily, they're the impatient type and will leave themselves vulnerable after peeking. You could also somersault assault them too. The next section is kind of spooky. You've got an enormous value of acid with your only way across seeming to be consecutive homing attacks followed by a well-timed light speed dash and to make matters worse your targets for the homing attacks are gun beetles that got amped up with electricity so you have to begin your beatdown at the right time or else you'll end up incinerated as scary as it is this maneuver is pretty fun to pull off my only gripe with it is how you might accidentally use the bounce bracelet instead of the light speed dash because both moves are mapped to the same button for some reason the red on the spring near the bottom of the vat makes screwing up here a bit more tolerable, but I'd prefer if the mapping issue wasn't a problem at all. You know how you can avoid this deadly section to begin with? By flipping that hidden gravity switch we talked about earlier and taking the main route while upside down. This lets you actually grind on the ceiling rails instead of sliding down them with your hands like before. You don't need to worry about the gun bot in the hallway, nor any of the bots in the main room. And that pit of acid? Nonsense! You can just skip it and move on with your life. But if you're feeling a little devil, then you might want to try and destroy those beetle bots while gravity's turned up. You can't reach them by regular jumps or even bouncing, but if you spin dash against the curve of the wall and jump off of it without touching your analog stick, then you can set yourself up to perform consecutive upside down homing attacks followed by an upside down light speed dash. And if that's somehow not to your taste, then you could charge up, climb to the top of these unbreakable containers, jump, and let loose to demolish those bots with an upside down light speed speed dash attack! How are there people that hate this level? The end of the room has a chow box given to you for free. Don't get used to that since the others are harder to find. But who cares about that? We've come across yet another high speed warp tube. What's interesting about this one is that it spits you out upside down. Sadly, entering this tubey boy while upside down doesn't change the gravity when you pop out. No matter what, your head's gonna be topsy-turvy. The trail of rings before you are begging for a light speed dash which easily collects all of them, but something tells me most players didn't do it. There's three artificial chaos ahead that you must face on the ceiling of a large room. This setup should sound familiar, since the first large room you entered in the level had you face a single one of these guys, meant to ease you into the gravity gimmick, whereas now that you've gotten more experience with it, the game trusts you with more difficulty. Flipping the gravity switch will leave you with another familiar situation, a dead end. You already know that you have to squeeze through the hole again like before, but when you flip gravity to make your attempt, the steel containers block your way. This is quite a predicament since you're sure you've got a somersault into the next room, but you don't have any way of breaking these blockades. This forces you to explore around a bit, eventually coming across a spring on each side, but with no rail this time. N no, seriously, this setup is the same as before, but without the rails. What was the purpose of them in the first place then? There has to be a reason, there just has to, right? Otherwise, why would they remove them here? This is honestly going to haunt me for years. <laughs> Moving past that nonsense, you can obtain the Flame Ring, which powers up your somersault, allowing you to break steel containers. Oh, and how thoughtful of them to place two victims right in front of you. With this newfound ability, these containers are are no more. You could press onwards, but if you decide to go even further back in the hallway, then you'll notice that there's a pit that will likely devour you should you drop down. You could perform a spin dash jump in an attempt to cross this pit, or take these rails. You know, I'm not even going to question these kinds of rails anymore. Sometimes they're there to be useless, to look cool, or actually help out. It's become clear to me that they just do whatever the heck they want, so I'm not going to care. Crossing one will leave you at a lower elevation, where at the very end of the hole is a chow box. I told you they'd be better hidden. You can actually see that this chow box is here when you first enter the room upside down by spin dash jumping off the curved wall. Sure, you can't destroy it like this, but it's neat how you can kind of give yourself something to shoot for in this room upon entering. Destroying the child box will not only reveal its contents inside, but a switch that when pressed creates a trail of rings meant for you to happily light speed dash up to safety. Now you can finally break those blockades and enter the next room, where you've got to deal with a dude that's zapping everywhere. While you could drop down and handle him swiftly, you can skip him by carefully jumping from one hallway to the next, where you've just 
gotta grind on the ceiling rail, it's too cool not to. If you end up getting too caught up with the cool things you can do in this level, and four minutes pass before you approach the end, then you'll hear Eggman again. You might think he's just exaggerating, but once you see that he's been holding a gun to Amy's head this entire time, that makes his threat here feel a lot more real and dark. God, I love this Eggman! After the ceiling rail, you're presented with another familiar challenge. A vat of acid on the floor and ceiling. Except this time, you've got a light speed dash instead of taking a rail. I imagine some players may actually feel more comfortable with this than the rail, but man, you haven't lived or, you know, died until you messed up the timing on this. There's nothing like accidentally somersaulting to your doom. The ceiling of this tower doesn't have any apparent methods of sending you down, meaning you've got to destroy some crates to reveal the Spring of Sanctuary which is powerful enough to turn your gravity right side up, cause who needs gravity switches? When the next set of doors open up, you may be surprised to see the dark abyss of space staring into your soul, along with a trail of rings. What's so funny about this is how only part of the rings in this trail can be seen due to the game's render distance on these objects being too short, making these guys look like a light speed dash to doom to anyone encountering them for the first time. I kind of like this in a way though. In every level, you've relied on trails of rings to lead you to where you need to go. Whether you knew it or not, you put trust in them, and that trust is now being tested in a leap of faith towards the unforgiving depths of space. What better way is there to forge an eternal bond with your ring companions? I say none. There is no better way. With your resolve hardened, you walk towards the first ring in the trail, smile to yourself, and with a heart of gold, leave your life in their hands as you perform the coolest light speed dash in the game. In the next room, almost as if the level's trying to ruin your moment, there's an artificial chaos spitting out as many foes as it can. But you already know what to do with them, right? Nothing but a good old light speed dash attack. Homing attack in the beetle will put you at the exact height to hold onto the ceiling rail and happily slide down to <gasps> another high speed warped and it's over. <laughs> Dealing with this strange enemy setup's easier than you think, which opens the next set of doors to yet another familiar sight. If it wasn't clear already, this level does have a habit of reusing similar looking rooms, and while I'm not the biggest fan of it, I like how these ladder rooms are something of a hard mode version of what you experienced before. If they weren't any harder, then this sin would be a lot bigger in my book. You could fall down to the ball waiting for you, but if you run along this tightrope and destroy the gun beetle, then you'll reveal a gravity switch followed by another room. As always with these switches, you must resist the temptation of progressing in the level and instead opt in for seeing what wacky stuff you can do. In this case, if you go backwards to the tower that you entered from the high speed warp tube, then you'll fall to the ceiling where there is no reward. So are you stuck here for all eternity? No, because you'll notice that the devs placed a gravity switch here to prevent any curious players from soft locking themselves. How heartwarming for them to look out for us. If you decide to take the lower path, then progressing is a simple matter of bouncing over a wall, springing up and destroying some bots. But you'll notice that the third and final chow box is locked behind an acidic gate that you can't pass through. This lets you know that there's more to this room than meets the eye. If you flip the gravity switch from before to go upside down and then enter this room, you'll spot a rocket that you can launch straight at the barrier, letting you flip gravity once more and break the chow box. You'll hear a voice when entering this long hallway saying, and when you flip the switch and finally escape this building, you'll hear Eggman once more. Nothing like some encouragement from the dude holding your friends hostage. This area, I'm not gonna call it a room like Eggman did, cause it just isn't, is the final destination of the level, and one that tests everything you've learned about how this gravity mechanic works. As you can imagine, there's a lot of trickery you can do here, but let's start by focusing on what the main route has to offer. You flip upside down and land on this purple structure. You then press onward, activating the gravity switch to flip to green's wall, then bouncing to climb higher and flipping to yellow's wall 
wall. There are no enemies during these flippy maneuvers since it'd be easy to get disoriented if it was difficult at the beginning, but now's when things start heating up. You've got to leap to Blue's wall, but there looks to be a lot of space you've got to clear, which is why the gun beetle's there to close the gap. If you can calm your nerves and face this new experience head on, then you'll perform quite a strangely angled homing attack before landing. Down to Yellow will put you face to face with a blue faker, whose path behind him looks tempting, but if you detour to check the rest of the ground, you'll find a trusty shield. If you hit the spring while right side up, then nothing happens, prompting you to flip the gravity before making another attempt, this time actually sending you somewhere. And lo and behold, we have yet another rail on its side. I've grown fond of these guys. At first they bugged me with how inconsistent they were, but you know what? Screw it. Let them live their lives. You could board this rail by hitting the spring, but that forces you to grind really slow. If you want speed, then light speed dash the rings to zip on by the good guy green. The electric beetles here can be a touch tricky, but patience will get you through to purple, who brings you an offering of a trail of rings. And come on, after what you experienced in that fateful moment earlier, how could you refuse? From blue to purple, you've come full circle, now on the side of the structure that started this mess. At the end of it, you'll get your first good look at the finish line, which is guarded by an acidic barrier much like the one that was guarding the last chow box. There's a rocket station at the finish line, but no rocket, at least not until you flip the switch that makes it appear. Great, so now all you have to do is launch the rocket and you're home free, right? Well, you're kind of sideways currently, so you've got to keep going with your next destination being Captain Red. On the left end, you can switch gravity down to purple, where you'll spot a phoenix trapped in a cage. These, as you know, are only destroyed by rockets. The cage, not the phoenix. <laughs> but there's none in sight, leaving you to explore around to save the poor critter. As you run along purple, green calls out to you with multiple goodies. This jump is a bit of a gap, but this area has already tested your steel multiple times, so this leap should be right up your alley, rewarding you with two two lives and a spring to return to purple. At the end of it, there's an ancient ruins, but more importantly, your boy blues over there and within range. Reaching there will bring you face to face with the rocket that'll set the phoenix free, which you can spring over to and save from this cosmic nightmare. Back to the ancient ruins from before, your melody of mysticness will spawn a ring trail to the top of Captain Red, where you can retrieve a one-up or a chow, depending on your mission. Just don't get blindsided by the gun beetles. You can drop down from here to the final platform, or if you're taking the main route by switching gravity from upside down to right side up. If you landed here without hitting the switch from earlier, then that means no rocket and no goal for you. But thankfully, a spring was placed at the end of this platform that'll send you back to the beginning for a retry, which we'll take right now so we can explore all of the crazy wacky things you can do here. If you jump off Sir Purple to the right, then you can land on the underside of your boy Blue, where you can sneakily land on this gravity switch and activate it to despite being at an awkward angle. You can also make your way to the underside of Captain Red. If you jump off purple and land on the guardrails, then you can actually light speed dash this ring trail and do that same sneaky switch maneuver mentioned before. Jumping from purple to green is easy, but it doesn't do much for you since if you hit the spring, you'll end up falling into the abyss. Probably the most well-known skip in this place is leaping from purple to red due to how close they are to one another. You might think this is pointless because the switch you need to proceed is on one of purple's walls, but you can drop down onto the guard railings and hit it easily. You don't even need to worry about climbing back up, since a clean spin dash jump is more than enough to make it to the finish line. Hitting the spring on one of Green's walls while sideways doesn't do much either, simply flinging you into nothingness. Except this time you can see objects and an enemy from what I assume is a previous section in the level. Huh. If you super bounce here instead of flipping the switch, then you can hang out at the end of green, but staring at the rail is all there is to do. Back on yellow, you can fall onto the shield, but that won't save you from your lack of escape routes. If you hit the spring down here while the gravity shifted towards it, then you'll get soft locked, forced to bounce on it till the end of time. The only movement you can do during this animation is at the tail end of it, where you're able to turn. But since you hit the spring immediately after, your efforts are negated. 
needed. Avoid this spring lest you wish to become a victim to its evil. When on top of yellow, you can drop down to that same spring, ignore it, and either grind on the rail or light speed dash to green, where you can run around, bounce, and backtrack because you got yourself stuck. If you super bounce against yellow's upper wall, you can reach the tippy top, where you can spin dash jump to the switch on purple's wall or the finish line. Speaking of shortcuts, you can spin dash jump from yellow's side wall to blue, but if you prefer taking the main route and you're on purple's wall here, then you can take a long fall to red. You can make the same jump from blue as well. When on this side of purple, you can super bounce against the wall to your left to reach the top. If you walk to the edge above you, then the camera will shift since it thinks you're on top of purple. This perspective can help you land on the side of the ancient ruins. And guess what? You can still play the mystic melody like this. When I first got in this position, I didn't think it would work, but it does. Better yet, you can light speed dash the ring trail, and if you nail the angle, you can land on the gravity switch on one of Red's walls. Does this save much time? No! Do I care? Heck no! It's sick, and that's all that matters. And for our last trick, we'll return to the beginning with good old purple. If you super bounce against this wall, then you'll end up on the underside of the entire structure, where you can then spin dash jump to the underside of the final platform. From here, you can fall through the floor of the goal ring cell and finish what I think is one of the most underrated Sonic levels ever. The sheer amount of creativity that you can express by using this level's gravity mechanics to your advantage is nothing short of astounding. Shortcuts, alternate routes, sick maneuvers, you name it, you can do it. This place full of madness perfectly encapsulates the uncertainty of the hostage situation that's been forced on Sonic, who has to endure Eggman's voice threatening him over the intercoms. And do matters get any better when Sonic finally arrives? No, they get much, much worse. Crazy Gadget is the perfect precursor to the perfect storm. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Do you know who I am?